Praise God. Well, glory. Whoa, what a marvelous response here tonight. <laughs> Let's break out the cobwebs here, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Victory Christian Fellowship, where... Jesus causes us to triumph always. Always. Oh, oh, I love that word, always. Hallelujah. There's so many signs and signals that don't look like always, but it's always. And it's always not because we're so smart. It's always because of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So before we have the offering tonight, I'm going to share one scripture from Psalm. Psalm. <laughs> Jeremiah 16, 6, 15, 16. I think I'm gonna, you see my the Bible I use here. I decided the other day I'm going to start bringing my a bigger Bible. <laughs> if I forgot tonight, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Listen to this now. And Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by Thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Hallelujah. The Word of God is the joy and the rejoicing of our hearts. Hallelujah. Isn't it just so wonderful to just, you know, in the last few days, even just I send out a little poster every day or with, with a, with a uh, scripture on it, you know, and just meditating. Not a long period of time, just, just oh, it's just like lights come on. The Word of God is so rich. And you see things that you didn't see before. And you could see, you know, you could see, oh, I don't know, finances in the scripture one time. And the next time you're studying it, you go, there's healing in that scripture. You know, it's, everything's in the scripture. For, there's peace in it. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's the joy and the rejoicing of our heart. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love his word, folks. I love. <laughs> That's why we teach his word here. 
We love His Word because His pastor's been teaching recently. The Word is the seed of God, and the seed of God is the Word of God, and the Word of God, the seed of God, is Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And praise God. We can rejoice because of Him. We can rejoice because we do know that we're not perfect. We do know that we have shortcomings and frailties. The psalmist said, My heart and my flesh, they fail me, but you're the strength of my heart. The Word of God brings strength to us. It brings peace to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Praise you. In the fear of the Lord, there is great confidence. Praise God. Our confidence is not in ourselves. It's in the Lord. And that's why over in Ephesians, Paul was led to write about Jesus. He is our peace. It's not the situation, whether it's changed or not, or whether it's fixed up or not. It, it's circumstances, situations. Have they changed? Have they not changed? Jesus is our peace. That's what I, and once we have a hold of our peace, whew, you find out the situations and the circumstances change. Amen. Well, we're going to have offering time now. Are we going to have an offering song tonight? Woo! Our soloist tonight who confessed before the service, she loves to solo. <laughs> God bless Andre, I tell you. So God bless you, Andre and Lewis. sharing a testimony with pastor about how the lord cleared out our parking lot before the service looked like there was a party going on out there that we didn't call we love to praise him folks we love to praise him why do we love to praise him because he's god because he's good and he's not good to us because we're good he's good to us because he's good amen oh thank god for his grace Thank God for his mercy that endures forever. We bless these offerings. We bless the gifts given to you, God, here and online by people who are watching. We praise you and thank you for your gifts unto us as children of men. Yourself, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, your word, hallelujah, and all these many blessings. Our Barshonga Kandada Masi, our brethren in the body of Christ. We're so thankful, Father God, for you and your word in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Praise God. Well, we're, you know, we're not that far away from the summer picnic, church picnic, <laughs> which is what, the second Saturday? In July, as Pastor Eddie would say, when? For the rest of your lives. No, I heard him. I heard him one, <laughs> one Wednesday night after the service years ago. I heard him upbraid somebody because <laughs> they said they weren't going to be there 
they had uh, a, a little trip they had scheduled, and, and Addie said, "Well, you know better than that. You know the second. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Praise God. <clears throat> you know, I'm so thankful. Uh, I don't know what it was exactly, but probably about a year and a half ago, Pastor Eric sent out text to the elders, and he said that he'd been praying about inviting missionary Wayne Hendrickson here to teach here uh, on a on a monthly basis. And I'm so glad he heard from the Holy Ghost because those services have been so rich. And so we're just we're very we're very thankful for him and for 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 Jesus said my sheep hear my voice. Well, Pastor is our local shepherd, but he's also one of Jesus' sheep and he heard the voice. I think it's very obvious. Hallelujah. He does leave tomorrow. So remember him in your prayers. We thank you now, Father God, for the whole time. He's in Poland and Ukraine and wherever else he travels through to get there. The blood of Jesus covers him and is a hedge of protection around him and those in his midst. And we praise you and thank you for that. We thank you for that ministry gift you've given to us, God. Hallelujah. To help us mature in Christ and grow up and do the work of the ministry. We praise you and thank you for this, Father, and his safety coming in and going out in Jesus' name. Now, on Sunday, Pastor is going to be speaking on the resurrection. And it looks like it says God's grace and truth. Is that the whole title, I believe? Well, if you just hear the word resurrection, folks, you know it's going to be good. So we're going to be, Sunday is Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday. Okay, we're coming in next week after that. You know what it is. Resurrection Day. So that's a good preview of Resurrection Day. All right. Um, Pastor Vanessa will be preaching our socks off tonight. I want to remind you that Pastor, for a, for a while here coming up, each second Wednesday of the month, we'll be teaching financial seminar. So we're just thankful for that. And next Wednesday night, Reverend Fran from Addie's location <laughs> will be preaching to us. So who has a testimony tonight? I know Linda does. I'm going to have my bride come up here. Oh, okay. All right. So I have gotten the kibosh from my wife. <laughs> Anybody else? Praise God. Well, I got a testimony I was sharing with Pastor back there. Uh, about an hour ago, our parking lot out over here on the Edge Hill side had right smack dab in the middle a great big red tractor, you know, one, the kind that pull tractor trailers. And then there were two cars over by the pine trees and people were coming in and out. And I said, what in the world is going on? But <laughs> I prayed and faith went out there courageously <laughs> believing on God's help. And they listened right away. Uh, so they got out of here and I, I warned them, you know, please don't come back. It's a, it's private property. And, uh, but it was a strange looking place for a while. Okay. Who has prayer requests? Well, nobody will. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good evening, Wednesday World Warriors. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you all for watching the online 
broadcast. I forgot I had a peppermint in my mouth. Excuse me, sorry. Um, t- t- The title of tonight's message is God's Redeeming Love, Part 2. And in last month's message, we discovered that the first time the Lord mentions the word love is in Genesis 22, verse 2, when he tells Abraham to sacrifice his son, his only son, the son whom he loves. And there's something that Bible scholars call the law of first mention. Which means that the way a word or a concept is used in the Bible for the first time establishes its fundamental meaning. So the first time the word love is mentioned has to do with a father sacrificing the son whom he loves. So from that, we concluded that God's way of showing us his love is through the sacrifice of his beloved son. God's love is a redeeming love that sacrificed the son whom he loved to redeem mankind. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the way that I see it, the only way that we can know God's love for us is to know the sacrifice of his beloved son for us. And we can start to see it in Romans 5, 8, because we can see that God's love is not only a love that would die for us but it is an unconditional love that loved us even when we were yet sinners he sent Christ to die for our sins so we all have to come to grips with the fact that we have sinned Romans 3 verse 23 says For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So these verses are telling us that the whole world was in sin, living with a death sentence hanging over our heads. And condemnation to death and hell was the result of our sins. But John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8 again says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, because of God's redeeming love, we went from being sinners who were condemned to death and hell because of our sin, to being saved from death and hell into everlasting life. We went from being defeated, conquered, and enslaved to sin and death to being victorious, freed, and more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Romans 8.37 says, Nay, in all these things, We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So tonight, I want to show us how Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection shows us a parallel picture of our lives. And if we keep our eyes 
focused on Jesus from the cross to the throne, we can see ourselves in him become more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 which says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And we can look at the first Adam's life and see a parallel to our lives. As in, what happened to Adam in the fall happened to us. And we know that Adam was created in blessing to have dominion and subdue the earth. But then Adam sinned and his living soul fell into sin consciousness, fear, guilt, condemnation, shame, poverty, sickness, and death. And as Adam fell, so did we. But God so loved us that he sent his beloved son Jesus into the world to become flesh so that he could die for our sins. And he is called the last Adam in this verse. So he is also a parallel of our lives as in what happened to him in resurrection happens to us as well and we'll get there in a few so first Jesus was born without sin into this world he did no sin he knew no sin and he had no sin now that is a parallel of the innocence of Adam in the beginning. Jesus walked in dominion on the earth just as the first Adam was supposed to. Jesus exercised dominion over everything that moved on the earth, including the wind and the waves of the sea. Mark chapter 4 verses 37 through 41 says and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat on the ship so that it was now full and he Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Jesus exercised dominion over sickness and disease, paralysis, muteness, and deafness. He exercised dominion over the food supply and multiplied two fish and five loaves and fed 5,000 men, not including the women and children. Jesus exercised dominion over sin and death by forgiving sins and raising Jairus' daughter and Lazarus from the grave, I mean from the dead, to name a few. He even walked on water and turned water into wine. So Jesus showed us the original life of dominion that God had planned for mankind on earth in the beginning. We were supposed to just believe God's word <clears throat> that we had dominion and we would see that with God 
all things are possible. Even as his word says in Matthew 19, verse 26. It says there, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So Jesus' life paralleled the life of mankind before the fall, in the beginning, at first. Then it was time for Jesus to do what he came into the world to do. And that was to take on sin and to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As it says in John chapter 1 verse 29. It says there, The next day, John, talking about John the Baptist, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus did no sin, had no sin, and knew no sin, so that he could be the Lamb without spot and without blemish to take away our sins with his redeeming and righteous blood. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched, with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knew that his sinless life on earth was for the purpose of being our sin offering. For in the volume of the book, it was written of him to redeem lost man with the shedding of his blood to take away our sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 4 through 7 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he, Jesus, cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings Thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Let's go down to verse 10, which says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So Jesus became our sin offering to God and his blood was shed on our behalf. Jesus became the scapegoat so to speak for all of mankind's sins were put on him as our substitute. He drank the bitter cup of the curse of sin and death in the garden of Gethsemane so that we would not die and go to hell. Matthew chapter 26 verses 38 through 39 says, then saith he, Jesus, unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus drank the bitter cup of the curse of sin and death for us. And it is interesting to note that before Jesus drank the bitter cup of curse, he shared the last supper with his disciples, whereby he gave them his righteous cup of blessing, knowing full well that he would drink the bitter cup of curse for us all. Luke chapter 22 verses 15 through 19 says, And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you, before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16 says, The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to fulfill his destiny to save his people from their sins through his death, burial, and resurrection. So he took the cup of the curse of sin and death. And then came the betrayal by Judas. The accusation by the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees. The arrest and trial by Pontius Pilate. Whereby he examined Jesus himself and declared, I find no fault in him. John 19 verses 1 through 6 says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, to the people, to the crowd, Behold, I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, and he was presiding over the trial of Jesus, and he found no fault in him. So he decided to have Jesus scourged, which was to be beaten with a multi-tailed whip that had shards of hooked metal, bone, and nails tied onto it. So Jesus was scourged with that, slapped 
and mocked as a crown of thorns were pierced through his skull. And they put on him a, a purple robe to poke fun at him as the king of the Jews. And after that, Pilate brought Jesus back out to the crowd in this pitiful, humiliating, and physically painful state, hoping to appease and satisfy his accusers because Pilate found no fault in him. But the priests and officers shouted, Crucify him! Let's pick it up in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verses 23 through 25 says and the governor said why what evil has he done but they cried out the more saying let him be crucified when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tumult had made a, a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate gave Jesus over to the officers to crucify him and he washed his hands of Jesus's innocent blood Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 through 5 gives an account of the prophecy of Jesus's trial scourging and death on the cross verses 3 through 5 says talking of Jesus he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Jesus drank the bitter cup of the curse of sin and death and he gave us his cup of blessing because of his great love for us. And Jesus' trial and death paralleled our lives as we had fallen into sin. Because when Adam sinned, we became separated from God, guilty, ashamed, condemned, rejected, cursed, beaten up in life, impoverished, stricken with sickness and disease, and stuck in addictive cycles of sin, etc. Jesus took on all of that and more when he was nailed to the cross to suffer and die naked in public humiliation and shame. But on the cross is also where he shed his blood for our redemption from all the bitter curse of sin and death. And Jesus' suffering and death was a public declaration to all that our suffering from the bitter curse of sin and death was finished. John chapter 19 verses 28 through 30 says it records Jesus' final words and his final breath. 
It says in verse 28, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. The curse of sin and death is finished. Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 through 14 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Jesus bore the curse of the law, the curse of sin and death, because of his redeeming love for us. Have you ever read the curse of the law in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 through 68? Jesus bore them all so that we don't have to because of his great love for us to die and redeem us from them. He has given us the blessing the whole blessing, and nothing but the blessing. Romans 8 verses 1 through 2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, and there is therefore now no condemnation to us who are born again in Christ Jesus. The law The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We have been redeemed back into total blessing. Jesus took the bitter cup of the curse of the law for us and he gave us the cup of blessing. And that is a demonstration of God's redeeming love for us. So we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because he is the last Adam that represents us now. As he is, so are we in this world. Our life now parallels his life. And it did not stop at the cross. Romans 4 verse 25 is talking about Jesus. And it says, excuse me. Who was delivered for our offenses. And was raised again for our justification. Jesus was raised from the dead to show that our sin debt is paid in full. Through Jesus' blood and sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection on our behalf. He who knew no sin was made to be our sacrificial lamb 
so that we could be made righteous and our sins could be washed away. So the Son of God has made us free and we are free indeed. John chapter 8 verses 35 through 36 says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, forever, but the son abideth forever. This is Jesus talking. And he says, verse 36, If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So as we saw uh, the first man, Adam, fall into sin and sin consciousness, we saw ourselves fall in him. Now we focus our eyes on Jesus, the last Adam. And as we see Jesus die for our sins and be raised up in power, victory, and righteousness, we see ourselves dead to sin and raised up in power, victory, and righteousness consciousness as well. As we follow Jesus Christ from the cross to the throne in resurrection, we see ourselves accurately in him as more than a conqueror through him that loved us because his victory over poverty, sickness, sin and death, hell and the grave is our victory over them all as well. Because what he did, he did in his redeeming love for us. Revelation 1 verses 5 through 6 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We were dead in trespasses and sins, but God in his great love for us quickened us back to life through Christ. And he is our great conqueror who defeated our enemies for us. So all we have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his finished work on the cross, and his resurrection results on our behalf and we will see that we are more than a conqueror through him that loved us we have to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ the last Adam because his life saved our lives so we must look to the cross and follow Jesus there to see him carrying the weight of our sin and death and all of our problems there. We need to see how he resisted unto blood, striving against sin to deliver us from every bondage, every curse, and every fear related to sin and death. Then follow Jesus on through to the power of his resurrection where he seizes power and dominion over sin and death and over hell and the grave and over the devil himself and he made a show of them openly triumphant over them in his public death on the cross and powerful resurrection from the dead he is alive forevermore and holds the keys of death hell and the grave Matthew 28 18 says and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth 
in Revelation 1 verse 18 the Lord Jesus Christ says I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death Jesus has all power in heaven and earth and he has the keys of hell and death and his victory is our victory because he died and was raised again to redeem our lives from destruction we are again to identify with Jesus and his victory on our behalf we have to see ourselves in light of his resurrection for us we have to see ourselves in him lifted up out of the grave out of the muck and the mire and we have to see that our enemy is defeated because of what Jesus did Jesus bore the curse of the law the curse of sin and death because of his love for us he conquered our enemies because of his love for us he wants us to be in dominion over everything that moves on the face of the earth because of his love for us he made us kings and priests unto God because of his love for us so even if it's a dark time in our life in our feelings in our family, our workplace, or community, we have to keep looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and know that it is his will for us to rise up victoriously as the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So hold fast to the word of God. Romans 8, 31, 32 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Let's skip down to verses 37 through 39 in that same chapter. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God's love for us did not withhold his son, his only son, the son whom he loved, but he delivered him up to death even the death of the cross for us all so we must be persuaded that nothing not even death could keep him from rescuing us nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord so hold fast to that confession that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and speak that word to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ and what God the Father sent his beloved son Jesus Christ into the world to do to destroy the works of the devil on our behalf let us remember the power of God's redeeming love that sent his beloved son to hell and back to redeem our lives from destruction. Amen 
and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm about to put this down, but I got to pray with this in my hand. (laughs) Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you that we get to call you Abba, Father, because of Jesus, Lord. We thank you. We are no more a servant but a son, Lord. You've adopted us into your royal family. And I know I didn't talk about that tonight, but God, I thank you because it's true. Your word is true. You are good to us. Your goodness, your love, Lord, your love has your goodness and mercy following us all the days of our lives. Father, we thank you that it's an everlasting love. It's an unconditional love. Father, it's a powerful love. Lord, we just thank you that Jesus came and he died. Lord, and and he rose again with all power in his hands, Father. And I thank you that that power is on our side, Father. And we have nothing to fear, Father. You have redeemed us from the curse of the law, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name that we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath father we have victory through our lord jesus christ father and that's an eternal victory that's a permanent victory father we thank you in jesus name